Okay. Hello and welcome to the latest instalment of Survive and Thrive. Uh, my name is Claire Gamble and I'm joined today by, with Mike Pye from Mike Pye Marketing who's going to be talking us through what a crisis means for marketers. Hi Mike. Hi Claire, how are you doing? <laughs> Good, thank you. Are you? Great, thank you. Great. Um, so just a bit of a quick introduction from both of us. So um, as I've said, my name's Claire. I run a PR agency and Hooked Communications, and I'm also the founder of PR Unlocked, which is an online training course to help small businesses and marketers do PR. Um, we typically work with national and international businesses um, at Unhook Communications to help raise their profile, manage reputations, increase brand awareness, and to help them engage with their target audiences. And Mike? Uh, I can add to it. Really good at it as well. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, yeah, um, my name is Mike Pye. Um, I run a marketing consultancy business uh, called Mike Pye & Co. Um, I have been working in marketing ever since um, I started work, basically. So it's now my 14th year, I think, in marketing. Started in the last crash, actually, um, which is which is interesting. Um, so used to the panic that's going on at the moment yeah then. but I was at the, the complete opposite end of my career back then so I was yeah. I was um I experienced it quite negatively back then I suppose the agency I was at was um went bump during that oh. during that period so I can, can kind of um relate to a lot a lot of people's situations right now um but yeah essentially since then I've worked um in-house both agency side and client side um and then for the last five years been working um for myself um we help uh, help businesses develop and implement um targeted marketing strategies basically and i work with a team of other specialists that i bring in um to, to help help those businesses implement those strategies and um and thrive basically great yeah and we work together um, we on some shared clients and projects so Absolutely. good collaboration <laughs> excellent Great. So what, give us a bit of an overview then of what you're going to be talking about today. So yeah, a lot of people at the moment are coming to me, both clients um, and just general people in my network. Um, they're all completely up in the air with everything as, a, as everybody is. Um, it's a real time of flux. Everyone is um, really worried about what they're putting out, whether, what they're worried about, whether their business is actually going to survive. Should they be selling at the moment? Should they be continuing to market or not? Should they be diverting investment elsewhere? All those sort of um, questions. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to cover some of those from my perspective in summary. So kind of just looking at, should we be selling right now? Um, mm -hmm. What should we be doing from a marketing perspective during this really unprecedented time? Um, and looking more positively to a few months down the line, how are we gonna actually prepare to take advantage of the opportunities that, that come up um, on the back of this situation. Great, hopefully be reassuring for lots of people then to hear what you've got to share. Hopefully, okay. hopefully. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the first, the first bit is should we be selling? Um, I know I've, I've personally been on the receiving end of quite a few um, dodgy tactics of people trying to use this situation um, to their advantage. I've got a couple of examples coming up later. Um, but you know, I suppose um, on the face of it, it very much depends. Um, if we're an industry which is really helping people at the moment and there's a lot of appetite for, then absolutely now's the time to be trying to help the best you can through that, but not through fear tactics, not through um, trying to use it to your advantage, but in a nice, sensible, um, empathetic way. Yeah. Um, but for all the rest of us who find ourselves in a market, me, and I imagine you too, Claire, in, in a similar perspective where people are questioning budgets, questioning what their, where all their spend is. Um, it's a time where we actually have to kind of rethink our strategies a little bit um, and understand that it's, right now isn't necessarily the time that we're going to be selling a lot of services. Um, people aren't necessarily in that mode. Um, most of our clients are in this, a state of, of panic. Um, in fear for their own businesses, fear for their families, fear for their teams and whether they can pay the mortgage or not, whether they're going to lose their properties. Um, this is not the perfect buying mode no. for anybody, you know. Um, and from my perspective, the next, the next few months really needs to be about thinking about the long game um, and not even seeing it as a, 
as, as a selling opportunity, you know, trying to do it with some, some altruism, um, being empathetic and trying as best as we can just to help each other get through mm-hmm. this situation and um, through the messages that we're sharing, through the communication that we're having with, with all of our networks, through the resources that we can create. Um, it's all around just trying to be, be a really helpful um, and empathetic business person um to help each other get through it so you know a lot of a lot of people are saying focus on the industries that are doing well if you're you're selling into selling services into a business let's focus on tech for example because those businesses are generally doing quite well out of this situation Mm -hmm. but you know you've also got to think whether you've actually got any experience in those sectors are you just trying to capitalize in desperation on those opportunities um because if you are you're not going to be able to deliver a decent service anyway unlikely that you're going to have the experience to be able to do so and those businesses are going to be getting hammered left right and center from everyone trying to sell into them and it's going to be really difficult to sell into the noise yeah um so i think we have got to have a really good reason um to be contacting um prospects and if we are mm-hmm. contacting prospects or customers it should be in a way that's trying to help them whether that be sharing information whether that be creating resources um, whether it be creating connections, just reaching out to see how they're doing. I mm-hmm. think our selling should, at the moment, should just purely be thinking around what can we do to help and thinking about the long game because yeah. all of that goodwill will come back um, in, in the long term and we'll, we'll, we'll all be much better for it as people. Mm-hmm. Great, yeah. So um, looking forward to hearing what you'd suggest in terms of thinking about the long term as well for people's marketing. I think that would be... Some good tips there cool hopefully we'll, we'll get to that to the end but i think for, uh, before before we get to that point um i want to talk a little bit around cutting back so like mm-hmm. i said my first role was in an agency that, that went bump in the last financial crisis um and i completely get where where a lot of clients are at at the moment they need to they need to cut back um they they're, they're experiencing pains themselves they're worried about their businesses and that means making some tough decisions. And from a marketer's perspective, I completely suggest that that is the way forward as well. It'd be really easy for me to come out and just say, no, you've got to keep marketing, you've got to keep pushing. Um, but no, I think right now is the, the right time to be pulling back some activity. It's about rethinking our plans. This isn't like, this isn't your normal crisis situation. This is, everyone's saying it all the time, it's unprecedented, but it really is. Um, and we've all been, working on strategies and plans over the last years and months which are now completely irrelevant um so to keep on doing what we had in our previous plan is you know it's foolhardy it's a waste of budget it's a waste of exposure um and we need to kind of stop and have reevaluate and, and think what we're doing um but the flip side of that is uh we shouldn't be stopping marketing completely um i think you know um it's only going to prolong mm. the pain in the long run we've got to still be visible to some extent um we've got to make sure that our brand doesn't disappear completely we will be forgotten you know the, the internet's a crazy place people's memories are very very short we've got to still be um producing engaging helpful useful content to to make sure that our brand still resonates yeah and if we don't in three months four months six months time when we hope the economy is going to be coming back to to a better place others will have taken those opportunities and others will be front of mind and we'll be desperately trying to come back from nothing mm. and try and remind everyone that we're still here yeah. uh, whereby if we could just place some resource towards um keeping that communication going um then we'll stand us in really really good step yeah. so um also i suppose you know it's the best time right now to kind of really focus when everybody else is in flux Mm -hmm. if we can come up with a strategy which is doing what i said previously being really helpful being really engaging and um and and trying to help our networks with really really positive and helpful content um then now's the time to, to capitalize on that when everybody else is kind of in a complete state of of chaos with everything yeah. that they're doing let alone what they're putting out um from a communication point of view yeah absolutely and i think as well because obviously none of us have got a crystal ball so we're not entirely sure how long 
this is all going to last for and what what's going to happen on the other side but yeah. was such in the early days of this and it was such a kind of big sudden impact on businesses across all industries so it can be easy to think right can't spend any money can't do any marketing don't want to sell don't want to do anything yeah. but sooner or later you know businesses have got to continue they've got to carry on selling to their audiences and we're seeing loads yeah. of help and incentives and support coming from the government as well like they we can't have the economy grind to a stop so businesses have Completely to agree. how they're adapting yeah sharing their marketing messages appropriately yeah and it's been a crazy couple of weeks from that perspective because i've seen so many um clients and, and and just general people within within my sort of network two weeks ago when you know we, we were all in a real state of of panic and flux mm. from a from a commercial point of view everyone did just press stop all all of a sudden um sort of going into this i kind of expected that we knew there was going to be a, a recession on the cards but thought it would be you know a bit more of a longer period of, of sort of gearing down to that point and you see some gradual drop off mm -hmm. but for most people it was like automatic it was like it, it became uh, monday morning and everyone was like right we need to stop everything what we're mm. doing cut back um which is a crazy situation so everyone did that i say everyone a lot of people did that and immediately just went straight into reaction mode of just pumping out comms all around their response mm. to COVID-19. Um, and we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute, but we've both seen some, some interesting statistics um, and some results yeah. of, of how that has shaped people's perception of brands, um, but either positively or negatively. Mm -hmm. um, but before we come on to that, I suppose, although I've said, you know, now is the time to pull back had spend potentially pull back activity there are also opportunities so i'm just going to go on to the next slide so this is some some data that aj aj hanley rowe who's um, part of my team which is also a, a freelance digital digital consultant provided to me so this is two examples of, of clients that, that that she's been working on where they've actually seen the opposite um yeah. happen so um they're actually getting much more bang for their buck from their ad spend and getting much more traffic because there's a within those markets this is both healthcare and financial but it's something that we're seeing okay. across the board there is more there is opportunities there's less people advertising because everyone's pulling back budgets yeah um so there's more capacity to to be seen and because there's so many so much more people online at the moment there's also a lot more capacity to get more bang for your buck mm -hmm. so on the left hand side we're seeing um one client whose overall traffic is up while spending the same amount on both organic and, in, and their investment in paid and social and on the right hand side we're seeing a client who increased their paid budget by 10 percent, but the actual result of doing so has had an incremental effect they've, they've, they've received mm -hmm. much more than a 10 percent increase in traffic because of the the reduction in actual competition there is out there right. so that's some really interesting yeah. um statistics especially for businesses who generate a lot of their business online mm -hmm. and especially from ad traffic there are some opportunities out there right now to, to capitalize on yeah that's that's very promising yeah um and i suppose just to sort of back that up as well um you don't necessarily have to spend lots of money or any mm -hmm. to be helpful i think i think um it's it's now all around let's say adding value and finding out how you can help them so you don't need expensive um, retainers to do that with, with, with agencies. You can double down in-house and produce really, really great, compelling content. A few of my clients are doing just that at the moment. Great. They've got some downtime themselves um, because their business is slowed down and they're getting together as a team to think how they can help their clients um, in their specific sectors by, mm -hmm. by creating some really, really powerful content. Um, and I think that's where we really need to focus. Now's the time to stop trying to sell our products and really try and be helpful because now we actually have the time to do so as well yeah we can rethink our audiences and think what we can do to actually go into that creation mode create mm -hmm. create content in all shapes and sizes video content has never been easier to produce um podcasts have never been easier to produce you can get blogging you can create downloads and virtual assets and all sorts of different tools very very easily um and professionally as well and we don't necessarily just need to be talking about 
COVID-19 all the time, I think is the key thing. Um, so many businesses are, are putting out the same message. This is what we're doing in COVID-19. Yeah. And yeah, that makes sense if you're a business that really, um, it's going to be really affected by that. But if you're selling mm. shoes and people want to buy shoes from you, they don't necessarily need to hear about your response. And I think no. <laughs> you've seen statistics, haven't you, from a research project that you've done around yeah. how about people's perception of that. Yeah, absolutely. And then, so where would you, how would you suggest uh, p- people, especially if they're not particularly marketers themselves or they've not done an awful lot of marketing in the past, like how should, where should they start when, when coming up with ideas of content? ideas um to help their audience yeah um so it all starts with, with really understanding who your audience is um understanding your, um what makes them tick where they are what are the challenges right now and how what knowledge have you got as a business that can help them through that um we'll all be working in lots and lots of different sectors and we'll understand the unique challenges that they're facing within those within those sectors um so a lot of the time it's just a case of taking a step back putting trying to put yourself in in your client's shoes thinking about their immediate challenges and coming up with something that's unique to help them Um, and that you know that could be across all sorts of different um, methods of delivering that information but it all all really starts with just having a real thorough understanding of your Mm -hmm. customer and the easiest way to do that is reach out and ask them Um, so from from a personal perspective and doing just that at the moment we're constantly talking with um, our customers our prospects and people within our networks to try and find out what are the issues that they're they're struggling with at the moment and that's you know part of what we're delivering right now mm-hmm. is as a response to that um, putting together another webinar in a couple of weeks which is purely around coming out stronger the other side and is in response to lots of questions that people have been asking and us going out to ask those questions um, to businesses right now. What, 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 are they, what are the challenges they're facing? What are their fears for the future? What are their plans to try and come out of this stronger? How can we turn that into something really, really useful that's gonna help them? Um, and I think as well at the moment, now's a, good, a great chance to really separate yourself by being um, entertaining and engaging as well, because there's so much depressing, fear-mongering, um just and 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 a continual bombardment of content all around mm. covid-19 and the recession and all that sort of thing we're all getting exhausted by it and i think the brands that have um that can come up with something that's both engaging and entertaining and helpful and a value are going to really set themselves apart because people are online constantly at the yeah. moment probably more than they've ever been and they're absorbing content and they're absorbing an awful lot of content that's generating a lot of fear, but they're also thinking about what, how are we going to come out of this and, and how can I get away from it? So if I can create something which is going to be entertaining and take them away from all the fear and try and put them in a positive mode and try and help them with their, with their problems, then that'll really separate you out mm. from everyone else who's always just, who's just talking about the constant, um, yeah, the constant state yeah. of fear that we're all in. Need a break. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, and just to back that up, I suppose, this is another um, another graph that, um, that AJ's shared with me. So this is a graph showing the content that's been shared online over the last, um, last month mm-hmm. um, related to COVID-19 and the trends along that in terms of engagement. So what yeah. we're seeing is towards towards the end of the month that we've had a massive rise, obviously, yeah. as 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 the peak hit a couple of weeks ago um, in the, in the, the amount of talk online around COVID nineteen. But what we're actually seeing towards the end of the month is that's declining. The engagement yeah. with it, with all that content is really starting to climb because people are are getting to that point where they're just becoming a little bit exhausted by it. Yeah, um, and I know the you know the report that you've had commissioned really to show some of that as well yeah definitely and I'll talk about that in the PR um webinar yeah um, definitely but I think um yeah what's interesting as well about content and it's something from a PR point of view we're quite aware of but especially kind of articles being shared online and social media sort of worries around fake news and how trustworthy the information is and I mean I've even seen uh, examples of 
journalists like news editors at national broadsheets like newspapers sharing things which are their opinions or their thoughts or whatever and they're being shared and circulated as though they're facts yeah. and you know and even for the most sort of savvy of internet users it's easy to kind of look at all this noise and see a quote from like you know a politician or from somebody who works at the nhs or something and you take that as gospel so i think it's really difficult to separate fact and fiction and fact with opinion which i think as well when there's so much content being shared um it's really important to strip it all back and um because one thing that the research that um unhook communications carried out um when we asked people on the about their preferred channels of getting the communication some people said specifically wrote out an answer to say i don't want to get any information unless it's from the government or the nhs like they yeah. just want to go to the trusted sources yeah. to get so that they're getting accurate information i agree with that and i think um you know from a much smaller scale businesses a lot of the businesses that that i'm aware of all seem to to think they need to have a, a comment on it or to have some or share something related to it so everybody you can see, you see you'll see so many businesses online that are just doing their take on remote working um mm. <laughs> this is only so much that, that we can do you know there's yeah. only so much information that people can can digest about how to do remote working uh, <laughs> or how yeah. to do virtual conferencing and stuff like that and that's great it's fantastic that everyone's doing that and it's really helping everyone but there will become a limit and because there's so much out there which is very very similar Mm -hmm. what can we do to again be entertaining be engaging and be helpful and add add Mm -hmm. something a little bit different um yeah exactly great agree (laughs) um so a few things not to do so i mentioned right at the start of this some um quite dodgy tactics that i've had i think this was tuesday or two weeks ago so the day after everything went into meltdown I was having direct messages on LinkedIn. I was having emails from companies trying to use it to their advantage. The worst in case was this one trying to sell me death insurance, death, uh, death in service insurance. And I mean, like, seriously, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to say why that is wrong no. at the best of times. But to do that in the middle of a, of a crisis, and this is something that's been shared. I know a few people have received these messages and it's been shared online and it's done nothing for the brand. Mm. Um, well, I must admit, I've, um, I'm quite picky with who I connect with on LinkedIn anyway. Um, but recently, I've been a bit more generous with accepting people who I don't know. But just this last couple of weeks, I've stopped accepting people if I don't know them because you get yeah. the sales message immediately. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, like something like that's just not really appropriate at this sort of time. Um, but some people try to sell things and I think I, w- I wouldn't buy this even if you know the economy no. was well and business was booming and all of that so yeah. it's just yeah. not the right time is it no exactly exactly <laughs> um i think the main message is just stop piggybacking on it you know it is boring it is insensitive mm-hmm. people aren't in the mode to be buying let's flip it around let's see what we can do to help people instead if we're going to be sharing stuff if we're going to be sharing stuff directly with people then it has to be of real value at at this sort of time whether it be the email inbox whether it be direct messages on linkedin Mm -hmm. whatever it is if we're going to be reaching out to somebody personally it needs to be for a bloody good reason Mm -hmm. um where we're going to add a lot of value and and be really helpful um if we're just trying to sell something and use it to our advantage it's going to have a massively negative um perception on the brand and our Mm -hmm. reputation and we see in so many companies at the moment big companies that are having real brand problems because of the way that they've reacted to this mm. to this crisis with their workers or with their customers um it's having a real shift for major major brands so we think we need to take account of that from a smaller level too yeah absolutely so moving on to something a bit more positive and th- and a few things to to do and i'm looking now we're sort of in the next weeks and months um to to make sure that what the communications that we're putting out are um are of value and they're going to stand us all in 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 good stead so firstly um be personal you know everyone's stuck at home everyone is probably bored stiff climbing up the walls and desperate for some interaction so reaching out personally to our current clients to our lapsed customers to our prospects to anyone in our network we're trying to 
um, do that personally, whether that be picking up the phone or arranging a video call, um, it's going to be really impactful at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, done with the right spirit um, and done in a, a whole um, approach to, to helping them and showing some empathy, then it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to use a lot of the technology that we've got now um, to our advantage and, and, and continue to build those connections. A lot of us have businesses that are, are really driven by um by networks and mm -hmm. that collaboration that we all have with each other yeah um, and it's about trying now to to see how we can use the technology um to continue to do that um yeah. and also you know revisit revisit the people that we haven't spoke to for ages and try and spark up those conversations again and doing it in a way that we can share something of real value yeah. Um, I received one LinkedIn message. I think the person, I won't name the person, um, but I think they're one of your clients potentially. Um, I'll check with you after this. Um, but it was a really nice, it was a very nice message and it was, it was more of a kind of checking in message to sort of yeah. ask how I was. Um, and it was just really nice. It was short, sweet, subtle. It wasn't overly salesy, it, but it yeah. just, it seemed genuine which I think yeah. it's really hard because I think we've probably all seen examples of comms where people try, but really it's them trying to sell it dressed up as something yeah. else. A bit, a bit like when yeah. you get contacted out of the blue by someone you don't know and they're like, oh, could we catch up to see how we could be like mutually beneficial, which straight away I know they're going to yeah. try and sell me something. But yeah, it, was, exactly. it, was very, it was an, it was a really nice example and I thought it worked quite well. because Oh, it, definitely made me look favorably on that person and their business. Yeah. And although I don't have a need for their service at the moment, if down the line that I did, I would go to them. Exactly. Which is what we're trying to achieve. I've had exactly that from so many people that have, you know, whether they're potential suppliers or suppliers or just people within the network that have reached out personally, picked up the phone to see how I'm doing, um, sharing some tips and advice, mm -hmm. you know, just, being good good humans yeah. um, and like you said there's so many examples of, of people that I know at the moment who are going above and beyond in terms of helping their customers with, with what they do at the moment and being completely selfless and they're generating more goodwill than you can imagine there's just so much talk yeah. online about what they're doing and how they're helping numerous right. examples and it's those those people that are gonna you know really build solid communities after this mm -hmm great um this kind of same sort of thing but being authentic mm -hmm. around it you mean you've just you've just touched on on that um specifically but um you know we're all in the same boat we're all hurting we're all struggling we're all sitting at home um in our pajamas probably on our laptops yeah. um trying to stop the dog from barking at the post that might happen in a minute if uh, yeah. we get interrupted mine's, <laughs> mine's, stop, mine's stopping the kids from barking at the post man so <laughs> But yeah, so be authentic with it. Stop trying to do exactly what you said and trying to turn it to your advantage. If you're going to say you're going to reach out to help someone, reach out to help them and deliver mm -hmm. on it. Um, don't just try and use it as a means to try and start a conversation about selling. Um, I think the biggest biggest takeaway at the moment is the, the importance of, of being agile. Um, I was in a position where I'd worked on a marketing plan for the year for my business. Uh, I was in a position where I've done the same for a load of my clients um, and we were well into that marketing plan for 2020. That stops, that stops now, all that work. I mean, it's not saying it's all wasted, but we've got to draw a line in the sand and said, right, that was for the old world. Yeah. That was when things were good. It was based on five years of, um, of real positive growth and we're now in a completely different place. We need to completely revisit that and, the marketing plan for the next couple of months needs to be agile. It needs to be day by day. Uh, we need to be able to react from what's working, mm -hmm. uh, tracking what's working and what isn't, um, and thinking about the next few months as being trying to be on top of things on a day-to-day -day basis. So I don't think there's a space right now for a long-term plan. I think the next few months needs to be about, like I say, just sort of taking each day as it comes, learning from the data that we've got, not making rash decisions again, not necessarily, you know, plunging all our investment into one idea mm -hmm. or on the flip side, stopping everything entirely. It needs to be really look, doubling down and watching the data, seeing what's working and focusing um, 
in a really proactive way. Yeah. With having in the back of our minds, how are we then going to plan for um, coming back stronger in, yeah. the, in, the, in the sort of medium to long term? For some businesses, so I think everyone's realised very quickly, if they hadn't already realised, um, just how important it is to be online. And I know there are a lot of businesses which don't have as strong a digital presence as they probably should do. So if businesses are in that situation where, you know, for one reason or another, they've not been as strong online as they should be, um, but now they've got a bit more time to get everything sorted, how, what should they prioritize should it be websites or social media or lead generation or other kind of content what yeah what's the I think most that all, it all depends on what the business is and where they're at i've been seeing some great examples of businesses who were just that weren't very active online um a restaurant in manchester an italian restaurant that's that's very popular in manchester previously didn't do much online at all they've had to close the doors but what have they done they've turned it into an opportunity to create some really entertaining and helpful content so they're doing daily live cookery classes uh, yeah I think and they're that, building yeah. up so much great goodwill with their mm -hmm. with their customer base online by doing that and they're also um doing like um recipes and deli boxes on delivery so they're just twisting up what they do and trying to yeah. use it as an opportunity to build some engagement with the community yeah um, and i guess so there's ways i'm oh, sorry to interrupt no no it's fine i was going to say i guess there's ways as well of doing things quite quickly as well like people i think a lot of businesses probably think going digital and updating things is a massive massive project but i know locally to where i live for example so again the restaurants have had to close but a lot of them are now doing takeaway and instead of having to suddenly have everything online where you can order through their website they've just they've got a really simple pay function they've got a web they've got a menu you phone up order they send you a link to pay yeah. online and it's super it was super quick and easy to set up but not it didn't have to spend they didn't have to spend loads of time or loads of money on doing it no exactly i think we've never ever been in a better position to try and turn create a positive out of this situation there's never been a time in history where we've had more access to more technology mm -hmm. that we can make our businesses come to life digitally very very quickly and easily whether that be through marketplaces on social media whether it be through social media scheduling tools content creation and curation uh, email marketing tools everything is out there virtual conferencing there's just there's so much that we can we pied our minds to it we can mm -hmm. quite quickly turn it turn it into a positive um yeah. if this had happened 10 years ago or, or I, I think we'd be in a very very different position everyone mm. would be having to stop to some extent and because none of this not all of this technology was available right then um so yeah from, you know, from a, a small um hospitality business idea whether you're whether you're that kind of business or whether you're a, a service business there's ways that you can create something and create new products very quickly uh, digitally we, i'm doing exactly that at the moment we deliver a service i'm preparing some new products where we can deliver that online mm -hmm. um, if you if you deliver consultancy can it be commoditized to some extent and, and delivered in um in a format where it's accessible to mass people on a subscription mm -hmm. basis or something like that there's, there's all sorts of different ways that we can look at what we do now how we can turn it into something of value and then deliver it um, yeah. and there's never been an easier way to get it out to our market digitally either mm -hmm. so i think yeah if businesses need to kind of take a step back up and look at what they're doing and think about how they can maybe deliver it in a different way yeah. and start small with it as well rather than thinking they have to completely generate a whole brand new re uh, revenue stream uh, maybe just think about how we can just turn this service into a new type of product and just try it out, iterate, yeah. learn from it and, and can continue evolving it. Absolutely. And I think as well, businesses don't always have the time to look at what they, what assets they've got or what intellectual property they've got. So this is yeah. a good opportunity, isn't it? To really review what you've got, what, you know, whether it's you've got set processes that help you do something, especially with the service. Cause I think, with product-based businesses, if they can sell online, they can sell online. But how do service-based businesses, yeah. um, what they know and their knowledge and their expertise into products or packages or something yeah. that's maybe quick and 
a bit more affordable for say smaller businesses or medium businesses or even larger businesses which are just watching the cost so that they can access that support in a yeah. more effective way i've got a friend of mine who's in um, another marketing business who's creating a, a whole series of training courses which are going to be able to stream online mm-hmm. uh, for a, a small fee just taking all the knowledge that she's already got within the business and, mm-hmm. and turning it into something which she can sell at a rate that's going to really help people and not mm-hmm. rip them off but offer a lo- whole load of value and just, you know it's just about thinking outside the box a little bit yeah um next think about quality over quantity when it comes when it comes to content creation like i said at the moment there's so much stuff going out um from businesses with all their own particular reactions to to covid19 i think there's a temptation at the moment because everyone's got downtime just to be prolific and mm-hmm. constantly pumping stuff out but with content marketing um i would suggest this at any any time it's all about qu- uh, quality over quantity i would much rather much rather produce something once a month which is absolutely on point which is completely relatable to our audience it's going to be really powerful and engaging than producing something every other day and just mm-hmm. pumping stuff out which is of low of low quality um, and the benefit of that is that it's going to be really really impactful but then you can also repurpose it in lots and lots of different ways mm-hmm. um, to get more out of it so for example a um, a long form blog post or ebook type piece of content that you could create, which goes into an awful lot of detail about um, particular challenges that, that your audience faces, could be easily repurposed into a, vib- uh, um, a webinar, sorry, in, in this sort of format. It could mm-hmm. be repurposed into a whole sequence of blog posts, multiple digital assets, little videos for social media. It could be a podcast topic. Um, it could turn into a podcast where you interview lots of other different people on the same um, sort of topic Mm -hmm. there's a whole host of ways that you can turn something um, and add and create an awful lot more value out of of what was an initial idea yeah I think I'm really guilty of that with my own business we um, produce quite a lot of content for either PR Unlocked PR training platform or in Hook Communications the PR agency side of things and because like the content's created quite regularly I think sort of I personally have a tendency of kind of like sharing it once and then just leaving it moving on to the next thing and then actually when I look back and you have all the all these videos or in-depth articles or things and I always think oh there's more I should be doing with that but I, yeah. I don't know why I don't <laughs> well it's just because I suppose as, as business owners you're always constantly trying to think of the new idea mm-hmm. um trying to be creative and you because you've been absorbed in it so much by creating that piece, you're bored of it by yeah, the time <laughs> it starts to go out and you want to start yeah. thinking about the next bit, but everyone else has probably only seen it once or not mm-hmm. at all. Um, so how can you get more and more people to see it in different ways? And this goes back to, again, sort of getting more bang for your buck at the moment when times yeah. are tight, focusing on quality over quantity means that we don't have to in- invest as much time as resource into it as for if we were producing volume and volume of content. And then how we, if we can repurpose it in multiple different ways, we're getting a lot more value for that, mm-hmm. for that piece. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next point, be generous. I think now is the time to stop hiding valuable content behind sign up walls and stuff like that. Um, I've got a few like, white paper type tools and videos, which I'm going to be releasing to everybody for free. Um, and I, I did never charge for them before, but even obtaining their sign up details as, 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 as um, prospect information is still a transaction. Mm-hmm. And I think at the moment we just need to be really generous in all the content that we're providing people and how we're trying to help people. So that's, yeah, stop gating content. It's about um, being generous with our time and expertise, having a chat with people, seeing where we can help at any, one, at any time just to, to try and use our expertise to help them overcome some of these challenges yeah um and invest time in doing that with our own personal brands as well mm-hmm. so rather than just from a business point of view how can we take ourselves out of the business and and use this as a way to to, to generate a lot of personal goodwill with us in, individually and, and and be seen as the person that's going out the extra mile to help each mm-hmm. other yeah no it's really 
an important point, isn't it? And with the sort of gating co the content as well, I know it's it's a little bit different, but um, media outlets like newspapers have been criticised a bit because they've been sharing kind of coronavirus related content um, and sharing it on social media, but then people can't access it. And yeah. and I get it because I mean the media is in publishers they need to make money and yeah. how to make money out of journalism is a massive massive topic but at times like this i think some of the articles which come to mind people have been criticizing it because they get shared on social media and they do look like then there'll be like exclusives or brand new pieces of information but even yeah. like i know for example the financial times which has a paywall they're very good at if they've got content which is of genuine use and, and interest to a lot of people they'll make sure that those articles aren't behind a paywall so i think uh, they're quite a good example to look at, at making sure that people can still access the content but i think from a brand and business point of view it's really important like you say even just getting an email address is a transaction isn't it and people yeah. at the best yeah. of times don't want to necessarily give away <laughs> all their details and get spammed so yeah exactly exactly um i suppose on that topic um email um, I think at the moment, I'm, I've always, I always say that, that e email isn't dead. Everyone talks about email being dead as a medium, but I, you know, we all, we all get volumes of email marketing from, from companies all the time. Mm -hmm. I think it's still a really, really powerful tool. Yeah. It's, um, it's accessible. It's relatively cheap and that comes with its own downsides because everyone's doing it and it's, uh, it's difficult to then sort of break through the noise, mm -hmm. but it's a great way to start, um, reconnecting with people. Um, it's, it's a means to get direct in to people's inboxes. Everyone's at home. Yeah. Like I said, everyone's online all the time. Um, and I think those people that are building really, really compelling um, and engaging email marketing um, campaigns, again, that are focused on delivering help and value, mm -hmm. um, will really prosper from this. I think mean, I know a few people that are starting to use email again from a personal brand perspective. So rather than just company newsletters, they're creating their own um, newsletter sequence um coming direct from them with help and advice uh, mm -hmm. which is a really really great um great way to use it um and yeah like i said it's just a, it's just a really really powerful tool when done right um and you've got yeah. to you've got to treat the inbox with respect you're actually you know getting directly in front of somebody and just filling it full of sales messages and un unengaging content is, is going to have the opposite effect but you know when when you're done with with thought and done with a with a means to, to to really help people then you can have a really really great um impact with email still mm -hmm. um from a personal perspective we stopped our usual email marketing plan um last month and instead just focused on every positive news story every um tool and resource that we found that would we thought would be of value to people whether that be um a slack group that i found where agency owners were sharing information with each other um all sorts of different things that were cropping up online mm -hmm. that people were creating to help with people and i just filled filled our newsletter with that and filling all our content with that kind of content great um, yeah. and as a result i've had so many great um replies to those campaigns people saying thank you asking to be included or include other people into them oh, um, okay. yeah it's just it's just mm -hmm. it's a real small scale it's just about thinking about what what value can we add and stop talking about us start sharing mm -hmm. more helpful stuff yeah that's great and um again i'll go into it in more detail in the pr one but email came up in our research as as consumers most preferred um channel to receive communications from businesses at the moment yeah. um and i think as well it's direct as long as it's relevant and necessary it's going yeah. straight to the people and the database and with your email marketing tools that you use you can do really clever stuff, can't you, with how you tag yeah. people. So you can make sure that the right people get the comms. So you're not just sending out an email to somebody who bought something from you 10 years ago, which you probably shouldn't anyway, because of GDPR. Yeah. Um, but it's, it is, it's that direct um, communication. And also I think people can choose when they access email as well. I mean, we might all have yeah. email on our phones, but I mean, I don't have notifications on my phone. So I choose when I want to look at, check my emails. Yeah. I do um, just that, yeah. And so I have, I have a file, control, don't you? This is it. I have, I have a file within my inbox where I just swipe, I call it my swipe file, and just mm. things I want to have a look at later. Because I'll, I'll, you know, when, when, I, when my inbox is full, I'll scan through it and find anything of interest. 
and I'll, I'll stick stuff in there to look at later. Yeah. Um, that's the great thing about email. You go, you've got to try and use that subject line to catch, catch mm -hmm. people, find, show them something of value that's going to make them give them the hook to, to open. Yeah. And if they're interested, they'll save it and they'll come back to it. And I do that all the time. I think you, you, you mentioned two words there. I think that everyone should think about whenever they're sending out an email campaign, is it relevant? Is it necessary? Yeah, absolutely. If those, if those two things come out as a yes, then then send it. If they're not, don't send it. <laughs> That's yeah. as simple as that, really. It's funny because some of the email, like I've been doing a bit more email marketing for um, our own business recently, and some of the advice that I read, it should be like, you know, make sure your audience are hearing from you every week. But I'm, I sort of think if there's no point in sending stuff for the sake of it, you want to make sure that people no. are get like, as you keep saying, getting value from it. Um, and if you're producing good, useful, interesting content anyway, hopefully you do have regular things to share with people. But I like your suggestion as well about like not just making it about you and yeah. sharing things that your audience will find generally useful as well, which yes. also kind of helps support what you're doing. A lot of the emails that I follow, you know, probably share 10% of their own content and 90% mm. curated content yeah. that they think that I'll be interested in. And they're usually yeah. right. Um, stuff that's just general helpful, and that's fine. You know, you're still associating yourself as a brand with being a helpful, helpful brand, which yeah. which understands their audience. You don't that's necessarily right. have to create it all the time. One of my favourite newsletters at the moment. Quick one. Um, do you know James Clear, who wrote Atomic Habits, the book no. Atomic Habits? No, I don't know so that. Um, it's a really good book, and I'm reading it again actually. Um, and it's great how to sort of put systems in place so that you build good habits and make everything kind of automatic. But he, uh, James Clear's got a newsletter called 321 and it's yeah. like three ideas. Um, I can't remember which order it goes in, but there's like some ideas from him, some from somebody else and then yeah. something else. And it's just, it's really good and it's not salesy. It's just very like inspirational and quite helpful. And every time yeah. it pops up in my inbox, I'm really excited to read it because it's just, it's really quick and easy to read, but it's very, um, I don't know, it's really like inspiring and it, but it's just perfectly on brand for what he does. Like he sells books and courses and things about building better habits and lead, lead, living more productive lives. And I think it's a great example of the newsletter. Cool. I'll check that out. Definitely. Mm. Sounds good. <laughs> Off topic. <laughs> um, so yeah, finally, um, thinking about the long term now thinking about the future how are we going to come out of this stronger i think a really important message for everyone is that yes now we're in uh, a really really tricky situation and that's an understatement you know businesses are really suffering people are losing their jobs people are worried about the future um but this isn't going to last forever um everything is set up for the 2020s to be a real boom time technology is all coming together um millennials are getting to the point where they're established um retirees are going to start freeing up their assets there's going to be money coming out into the economy and there's going to be every all the ingredients together to to make the next decade a real boom time mm -hmm. um and that's something i think that we all need to be preparing for this this has been such a rapid horrible few weeks and and what's going to be a, a few months I think people will come out of this trying to get back to where they were in a rapid way as well. Mm -hmm. And as business owners, we need to be ready for that. Um, and that's why I think what's going to be really important over the next next weeks and months is thinking about a plan for making that happen. Um, like I mentioned before, what's been successful, the strategies that have been working for the last few years, uh, almost redundant at the moment um, we might be in a completely different world in a few months time whereby we have to completely reposition what we're doing people are getting exposed to new techniques new technologies new ways of doing business mm -hmm. um, and so at the moment we need to think about how that's impacting our businesses now but also in the future um, will we need to pivot what we do will we need to completely reinvent our, our business models and the way that we market um the, the, the biggest the biggest thing i can suggest is that we use this time real really really productively um developing a message that's going to be really that's really going to resonate when we want to come back what's the strategy going to be to relaunch how are we going to reposition what we do what content are we going to create um 
is there ways that we can build partnerships with other like-minded business businesses to help us come out of this stronger and help each other? How can we collaborate with other other business owners um, within like-minded sectors to try and come out with something really positive from this? Mm. Uh, new networks, new partnership agreements. Um, can we upskill? I'm sure that we've all got um, things that we need to learn and things that our teams need to develop. Um, and there's never been a better time to do that. From a marketing point of view, you can learn every different tool under the sun pretty much for free online. You can do the whole Google suite. You can become a HubSpot specialist. You can go through the Facebook ads program. You can do Hootsuite social media training. Um, there's just so much um, education and content out there that will help us come out of this as as better um, as better marketers. Yeah. Um, so I think you know it's, what what our what our focus is for the next few months is is is, is what we're going to do on the opposite side mm -hmm. of this. Understand that now is going to be a time to pull back and to slow down a bit, but we're using all of that time to just try and improve everything that we do um, from every level, whether that be uh, operationally or from a marketing perspective or new business. I mean, we're, we're, at the moment we're working on creating a brand video, we're working on creating content, we're creating on new products. So it's just about trying to use this time to make the most positive effect mm. to make sure that we come out of this ready to just go again, um, not come out of this slowly building up to try and, you know, start, start the process then. Let's, let's start the process now and yeah. be ready to press the button when the time's ready to just go out and, and, and try and take the opportunities that arise. Yeah. And I think as well, so what you're saying about the 2020s being a boom and it kind of makes sense that they will. Um, and I think because for businesses, as businesses and individuals, people were at this big, very beginning stage of so much uncertainty and it's like this massive tipping point. Um, but actually, it's probably only going to be a few months, which in the grand scheme of things is really not that much. However, like you say, it's how you use this time, which will define how you fare afterwards. Absolutely. And although if it's, you know, hopefully a, a few months of massive upheaval and who knows what sort of normality we'll go back to, you know, a lot of people saying like this is the new normal, but you know, potentially we've got another year or 18 months or so of things being different to how they were, yeah. but we've got an opportunity now to really look at what we do, make sure that you, your business is online, that like you keep saying, sort of you're agile, that you're prepared to kind of change and update your offering because people still need to buy from businesses um yeah. so it's just making sure that you're still relevant and going out with the right marketing messages when the time's right yeah definitely and uh i don't i don't want to you know run the risk of sounding really flippant with this and everyone can you, can you can be as positive as you want about it and we are all in a tough situation you know two weeks ago i was i felt personally at, you know at the bottom um but i'm just trying to flip it all from it to um just a positivity because mm. this isn't gonna last forever and the only way that we're going to come out of this is if we all um, work as hard as possible on, yeah. on taking advantage of the opportunities that come next. So our complete focus now is, is it's trying to improve everything that we do and help as many people as possible. And I think you know, if everyone takes that kind of um, approach to it, then and hopefully we'll, we will come out stronger from it. Fab. And if you were to give, if somebody, because a lot, a lot of people are now juggling business with homeschooling and looking after pets and cooking about a million meals at home and counting how many toilet rolls they've got left. Um, if, so if people were just to prioritise one thing to do for their marketing over the next month, what would you suggest that they do? Um, stop thinking about it as marketing and start thinking about it as helping people. So, um, if you if you're going to create anything, create something that's going to be really helpful and valuable, and and offer it out for free. I like it. It's that shift in mindset, shift in language, shift in approach. And yeah. if you've got if you think of it that way, it will it won't come. You won't have to worry about being too salesy or inappropriate yeah. because you that's not what you're doing. You're helping people. I like yeah, it. exactly. Great. Cool. So that's 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 it. I think. Um, any other thoughts from you, Claire? No, I think it's really interesting. And I think like, I agree with um, everything you were saying. And it's been a roller coaster of a month, has March. And yeah. April, I'm hoping 
businesses in general feel a bit calmer um that there's you know there's still going to be a lot of change a lot of uncertainty um yeah but i think people have just got to have hope and now the initial panic's over i think businesses and people are in a good position now to yeah. take a step back review what their business is doing and then make sure that any kind of pr marketing comms plans reflect that and like you say it's a time for people to help people to collaborate um but in a non-salesy <laughs> spammy way yeah. um and i do think you know and it's it's awful to see casualties like business casualties within this and no doubt there'll be more but like you say there will be opportunities and so people have just got to hold on tight and do what they can now yeah and definitely. we'll come out a bit stronger but Absolutely. yeah thank you great yeah. All right, so if um, anyone's had any, any questions, both of our, our details are here. Me and Claire would be more than happy to, uh, to answer any questions. Feel free to give us a call or, or drop us a line. No problem. Thanks for your time, Claire. Thank you, Mike. Bye. Cheers. Bye.